Dear colleagues, I'm Dikra Shaouch, and on behalf of Renewable Democracy, I would like to thank you warmly for your participation and your loyalty. Many thanks also to Gregory for accepting our invitation. Gregory Jemin is a researcher, doctor in political and social science at the Laboratory of Studies on New Forms of Work, Innovation and Change of the University of Liège, specialized in the new ways of working change processes. At the last conference, Gregory introduced us to the new ways of working. Today, Gregory will go deeper into the subject for deciphering the three Bs, the bricks, the bags, and the behavior, in order to better understand what is at stake in this new work organization and how we should deal with them in order to preserve your well-being and your health based on the concrete examples already implemented in certain companies and administrations. Now, I will leave the floor to Cristiano Sebastiani, President of Renouveau Democracy, who will present our trade unions activities and our related policies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, last time that we had uh, the conference with you, Gregory, the picture that I was presenting was uh, quite dark, uh, no <clears throat> consistency between uh, what the commissioner is preaching and what the services want to, to put in place. Today, I want to send a more positive feeling uh, because we are at the end of the inter-service consultation. Uh, one big part of this uh, new way of working with the hybrid work, the telework, the balance to be found between the presential and telework. Um, this decision is aimed to implement the culture of trust and leading by example. Uh, they are the two commitment of the commissioner. And actually, I was expecting um, a very positive reaction on the on the draft decision because the draft decision was a really bad bad proposal. And on the contrary, some DGs have been uh, making comments on the decision, have been challenging the proposal, has been even underlined that the proposal is not in line with the cultural trust that the, the commission is preaching. Um, one very crucial element is how many days a week telework is allowed, uh, because on the old fashioned way to to, to, to think uh, you must be in the office and telework is a sort of gift that you must deserve working in the office. And I've been really surprised to see many reactions from the GS underlying that only one day of telework per week is not in line with the change that we want to introduce, that we need more flexibility, less power to the managers. Uh, we must trust the staff we must allow them to organize themselves because they have already shown during the pandemic they do deserve the trust so today we are uh, just after the conference we are going to have the, another meeting of negotiation and i think that we are now more in the good path very far away from what we consider to be reached as a goal uh, but not so desperate like last time so in a way we are advancing better than foreseen. Uh, and I think that also your contribution and your video that has been seen many times, the fact that other colleagues are getting in touch with you for this uh, has given a good contribution to that. So I want to thank you warmly for that. And I'm sure that the conference today will be another step in the right direction. I leave the floor to you, Gregor. Thank you, Cristiano, and thank you, Dikra, for the invitation to present once again. I don't know if you were all there uh, last time. I will share my slides. So you should see my screen right now. Um, so maybe, as I don't know if all of you were there last time, I had a, a presentation in, I think it was April or May, so it's already far in my memory. Uh, on new ways of working, and uh, I'm I'm so I'm Gregory. I'm working at the University of Liège, uh, and I've been studying new ways of working as part of my PhD thesis. So my I would say my specialty um, is to uh, have focused on the 
process through which new ways of working are implemented in organizations because a lot of researchers are uh, going into new ways of working spaces, finished spaces, and are having surveys on uh, how do workers feel, what is the impact on the satisfaction at work, on, on well-being, on productivity, and this kind of question. And I, my originality was to look at how, what was the process through which these new ways of working spaces were being implemented, and of course, one challenge uh, is that new ways of working it's very broad and it doesn't really my position as a researcher is that it's not really possible to really define and give a clear definition of new ways of working and this is why it's interesting because people can have different interpretations of what it should mean and can have different revendications claims and, and ideas about how to to turn the id into a new building and a new project and so on so my position was really to say okay new ways of working it's an id it's a set of ids it's a, it's, it's a fashion that's the word that we use it's a management fashion it's a trend and some companies are taking this trend and trying to change the organization on the basis of, of these ideas. Uh, and this is kind of what I explained in the, the previous uh, presentation. I came back to uh, one project that I, that I followed for several years and I explained there was the ID, then there was a project group and I explained how the ID was turned into a new building uh, in the end. Um, and today um, I, I was asked to, to come back again for another presentation on what we call the three B's, the bricks, the bikes, and the behaviors. And if you meet, I don't know, several people, consultants, maybe other researchers as well, they will tell you new ways of working. You can think, it, think of it as being three B's. And this is a way, among others, to make sense of what does new ways of working mean and what, what it should entail. So it, it should be breaks, bites, and behaviors. So many people will describe this as a methodology to have a good, a well-working new ways of working project, if you want. So this is kind of a, a good practice to have these breaks, bites, behaviors. It helps you thinking about the project. From our point of view as researchers, it's just a strategy. And, and you can criticize, of course, this strategy to, to, to make sense of, of something which is not clear, new ways of working, it's very broad and so on. And so when you say bricks, bytes, behaviors, even if you have never heard of it, you can think, okay, bricks, this is the building, this is uh, the domain of architects, of uh, people in charge of the facilities and so on. So there is this space part of new ways of working. Bytes, this is the technology, so probably we will have IT specialist there and behaviors. This is the HR and communication part of the of the of the project. And what is interesting to me, the first thing to say about these three Bs is that in new ways of working project, people with very different expertises are brought to are invited to work together. Uh, so people with architectural design specialist and so on. Uh, IT specialists, HR, all these special, all these professions have to work together, and they are not used to it. Of course, it's it's you do not have a lot of projects that touch the building, the technology, and the human at the same time. So this is a challenge, of course, from the project manager perspective. So just to 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 be brief, the, the three Bs, um, uh, and and last time I, I explained to you how new ways of working. I had like this kind of historical reasoning about how new ways of working were born, if you if you like. And I said it came it came from the Netherlands, and then it, it became more and more sophisticated. There were books and so on. And the bricks is maybe the first part of new ways of working. This is the thing that people think about. In the first place, the brick, the ways of working, what does it mean? It's a new building, it's a relocation, it's a new way of thinking the workspace. Uh, and this is the first part, if you want, that was implemented um, historically. Uh, so when I say bricks, it's the physical infrastructures and the work environment in a very broad sense. So, I mean, it's the desk, it's the space, it's the way walls are placed. It's also the lighting, the, 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 the heating system, the, the, the way people move in the building. So there are very technical questions uh, in the bricks. 
uh, related to, to how the, the, the air is flowing and, and things like that. So there's a very technical part. And then there is the, the part which is more, I mean, accessible to everyone. It's all, speaking of open spaces, of hot desking or flexible space, of activity-based working. So we'll go into the detail, into what it means. But this is the first of the three Bs, this is the bricks, and it refers to the, the, the space and the physical environment. The second one is the bytes, and when I explained this historically, I said in the first, uh, in, in the, the first uh, new ways of working experiences, it was nearly all about the space, but then we had the influence of firms like Microsoft, who also said, this will only work if you have technologies that support uh, these new ways of working. So having open spaces and flexible desks doesn't mean anything if you cannot have a laptop and you cannot move in the space. If you have your, your desktop computer, you will be, it makes no sense to say you can work anywhere. Well, no, I can't because I have my desktop computer right there. Uh, if you have uh, uh, sheets of paper all around the place, you will say, I, I have to work here because my paper is here. So the technology is seen as something which, and when I say this, no, it's not surprising, but 15 years ago, it was to say technology needs to, an organization need to pay, that, to pay attention to technology in order to enable new ways of working. And of course, uh, my research was mostly conducted before the COVID crisis, but it's even more obvious now because we have all, nearly all been well, uh, customized, I would say, to working uh, from home and so on. Uh, so these technologies were maybe a bit surprising even five years ago to have something like Teams, to, to exchange at a distance, to have SharePoints where we can share documents together and so on. And nowadays it's, it's becoming increasingly uh, common. So the bytes, this is the digital infrastructure, the new technologies, and that's, that, that means working, all the technologies that enable remote working, the new ICT tools, so information and communication technologies, and also the, the paperless working, that is because paper is, um, is the, it does not really match well with new ways of working. In new ways of working, ideally you do not have paper because paper it's difficult to, 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 to take with you uh, all the time and to, to, carry, to carry all the time. And then uh, the last part of new ways of working, which to me is the most maybe difficult one, um, it is the, uh, the behaviors. So behaviors, uh, it came a bit later historically, and people started to realize that just changing the environment and the technologies was, well, even not working properly, but also some people begin to say, we do not need to do this kind of project for technological or, or infrastructural reasons. It needs to be a transformation in the way we manage people we need to change the organization culture, these kind of discourses. So the behaviors part became very, very important. And I will also discuss this, what it means, behaviors. It's also, that, that's from a very, uh, very uh, pragmatist perspective. It's also a way from, for HR leaders to legitimate the interest of the HR function in the organization because HR, I'm from the field of HR, so I can say that. When we have our students in HR, we explain to them that in most, in many organizations, the HR function is not always seen as legitimate. Oh, these people, they are, they are not really producing added value and so on. So there is this discourse of how can HR contribute to the organization? And so as an HR leader, of course, these projects are opportunities to say, we will rethink the organization culture. We as HR will play a leading role. And in the case that I was presenting when I presented last time, uh, I was mentioning that the HR leader of the firm who was at the head of the project became nominated HR leader of the year in Belgium. So this is, uh, this is a prestigious title in the, in, the, in the HR world, if you want. And so it means that there are, of, of course, strategic interest from the HR leaders, but also from the IT leaders and from the facilities infrastructure leaders to, to be involved in this kind of project. And, and, and there's this kind of pressure because a lot of organizations are doing that. So if you, as an HR leader, you, you will just say, oh, this is bullshit. I'm not doing that. 
you kind of put yourself at a risk to be isolated, replaced maybe, and so on. So I think this is, we do not say emphasize this enough, that if I put myself in the shoes of the HR leader, there is a strategic interest to, to say, we, we need to change the culture, the management, the organization. And of course, what it means is, is very difficult, but it's very broad and it really changes depending on the organization. But most, most often we see words like autonomy, trust-based management, objective-based management, participation of the worker, democracy, uh, things like that. Um, so these are the, the three bricks by behaviors. And at the first level, it helps to think the structure of the project in a new ways of working project. And in the case that I studied, it was like that. The project team was organized with a bricks team, a bytes team, and a behaviors team. So it was really used as a way to structure the project. But of course, you can always think maybe there are other ways to do new ways of working. So this is one way among multiple, an infinity of possible ways. But this is one way that has been written down by consultants and many firms have done, done like this. So if one director wants to do NWO, we'll go to another firm and say, hey, how did you do it? Well, we had bricks, bytes and behavior. So we say, oh, that's a good idea. So it's a way in 10 minutes, everybody can say, okay, now I know what new ways of working mean. It's bricks, bytes and behavior. So it's very, it's, it's kind of uh, easy to remember. And of course, it's once it's Accept it, it's not questioned anymore, but you could also always think about it and say, does it mean to have, does it need to have behaviors in it or bytes or, or what is the, the respective importance of these three elements and, and, and other kind of questions. But once it's accepted, it quickly becomes a kind of black box and okay, new ways of working, breaks by behaviors, including in, in among many researchers. So what I think it's important, well, what I, as a researcher is to say that many firms say we are doing new ways of working projects or something like that a future way of working project new world of work project there's several labels but it's kind of the same idea uh, and they will use the, the same label new ways of working but they are doing very different things um, for example uh, here in our university we have a faculty doing that and it's all about the bricks and the technologies are not even there to support the project. I mean, we, we cannot book a meeting room at a distance and things like that. And the behavior has, has been really left aside because in, in like an academic world, it's, it's really difficult to say we will change the culture and so on. So depending on the, on the project, some of them are emphasizing differently the different points. So that, that, this is why it, it doesn't really help thinking about the project because you say bricks by behaviors, okay, but what does that mean? And this is, to me, the real question. Uh, and also what new ways of working means has become more and more complex because more and more people are doing it and so are telling about their experiences and so are, are, are saying new things. Uh, some people will tell that co-working, for example, is a, a new way of working. Uh, should you include that or not? If you heard about, in France, the Entreprise libérée. I don't know if this is if I can translate this uh, where there is no managerial line anymore. It's just if you heard about transformation like uh, agile working with where there is no no managerial line but a, tr a, squ a tribe with a squad and, and and people have different roles in the structure. Is that new ways of working? I mean, it's very so it, it can already become become a very broad label. Um, and the three Bs is a way of making sense or, or giving the illusion that people saying you as a working, this is the three Bs. He, he seems to know what he's talking about. So, so it's a powerful, I call that a rhetoric device. It's a way to, to convince people because people are not convinced in an organization that there is a need for new ways of working. And so using this kind of rhetoric helps to say, okay, it kind of makes sense when you look at the picture like that. And if you don't really think about it, you could say, yes, okay, that's a good idea. Let's, let's do that. So, so now we know uh, what we are talking about, bricks by behaviors, and I will detail not briefly, I would say each of the, of the B. The bricks um, refers to how we want to reorganize the space. And uh, 
there, there are several ways of rethinking the spaces, but, and this is based on the research we have done, uh, you can usually, uh, at the same time, companies are doing different things. But if you visit several companies, after some time, you will have an idea of what new ways of working means. You, you will recognize the kind of space and you will say, okay, th there was an, a new project here. It happened. Uh, and so we try to um, yeah, point out, if you want, the, the, the main differences because between traditional workspaces and new ways of working workspaces. And this is kind of an illustration of this. The first criteria on which it is different is the the openness of the space. Do you have a lot of closed space, individual rooms, and, um, and, and, and a lot of walls, and people are walking away from each other and not seeing each other? Or is it open? And open space is, this is not something very new. I will not detail what open space is, but it, barely, it, it means that you can see very, very far in the building, and there are not a lot of visual separations and, and obstacles in the space. So the traditional space is rather closed with a lot of individual offices and the new ways of working space is usually more open, meaning that um, you see many more colleagues and, uh, and there are less, uh, I would say, space for privacy and, and confidentiality and so on. First criteria. The second is uh, the attribution of the space. And this is maybe the main uh, issue when discussing uh, this kind of project. In traditional firms, you have your own space, okay, your, your own desk. Uh, and the main idea is to say a lot of people nowadays, and this is all the more true with, the, with remote working. So the reasoning is rational. I mean, it makes sense to say a lot of offices are empty all the time, and this is a cost for the company. So, I mean, if you put yourself in the shoes of a director, you can, you can understand the reasoning. We could theoretically function with less, uh, less space, but the condition is that people need to share the workspace. We cannot have a desk for each person anymore. And this is how you have this kind of project saying, oh, uh, maybe we could have seven desks for 10 people. And if they, if they take another desk when they come and, it, it will always work uh, because we know that uh, most of them are doing remote working, are on the road or are uh, in customer firms or, or whatever. So this is the, the question of the attribution of the desk. The next question is called that heterogeneity. The idea mainly is that uh, when you have in traditional offices, uh, well, closed space, they are all the same. You have, you have a desk with your, your computer, your, all the desks are the same, but if you open the space and, and say, we can have uh, different uh, ways, different areas where people work, you can start thinking about different kinds of space. And this is why now we have all these reflections So we need space to focus, we need spaces to collaborate, we need big meeting rooms, small meeting rooms, and, and so on, and you have a whole new typology of the kind of spaces that people can use. And the main idea behind this is you do not have your own desk, so you can move in the space and choose another desk. So maybe it will help you to have, for, for example, half a day, you want to focus while you go in a focus zone and you will do your, your activity. The, the rule is that the space needs to be quiet and so on. But then you need to have phone calls. Well, you will move to a zone where you can have phone calls. And this is kind of, kind of idea. And then the last dimension, which is not always emphasized, but basically uh, we call that the symbolic meaning, is, is the fact that uh, traditional space is very stratified, meaning that this is by this, this references the hier hierarchical, I hate that word, hierarchical dimension of the workspace, meaning that you have. The, the manager office is at the top and he, he has more windows and, you know, this kind of traditional IDs and, and the, 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 the ID in new ways of working is that the space is absolutely neutral. So if you are, if you visit a new ways of working space, you don't know the company, you shouldn't be able to distinguish, uh, the CEO of the firm and a worker because they could be working at the same type of space, uh, side by side, if you want. And, and this, this is also a powerful 
argument in the change pro process to say it's not just for the workers. Everyone now has to say share the same space if you want. So it's it's becoming kind of neutral. Of course, this is very uh, different depending on the cases because lo in a lot of companies <laughs> there is, there is of course a lot of resistance uh, from the top management to go towards this kind of, of of spaces. But this is like the idea, and you see that you can really put the, the cursor uh, either close to the left or to the right. And so new ways of working doesn't mean you are all fully to the right and you can also have balances and, and some firms will make open spaces but leave a sign desk for certain functions like administrative or, or top managers will have their own desk. But then there are tensions potentially arising from this. So you, you see that there is a choice there to, to where you can uh, you can put the, the, the cursor. And so the move, new ways of working, the idea is to say, we need to take the, the, the cursor and to, 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 to go towards the right side of, of, uh, of the, and this is essentially, this is the work that the BRICS, the BRICS, sorry, the BRICS team has to support. So the BRICS team is, is, is the role of the BRICS team is to make it possible to go towards this kind of spaces in, in technical terms. So in terms of acoustics, for example, because we know that acoustics is a big issue of traditional open spaces. I think that now it is less and less the case because we have more and more advanced technologies to, 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 to uh, protect the workspace and so on uh, from acoustic issues. But you cannot see, this is a way of, of showing you the work of, that the BRICS team has to do. Um, I, I didn't want to do that, but uh, this is a, a, an easy way to do it. Uh, so I just put some more of caution thinking like what are the benefits and uh, the inconvenience of, of these transformations that it's really an easy way of, of having like the, 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 the pro and cons if you want, but this is really not an interesting way of doing it in my opinion. Because people will have different opinions of what matters. Maybe some advantages are seen as really prevalent, or maybe some people would just be totally against new ways of working just because of one inconvenience that is really important for them. And I think, from what I I know, the there are there are really very different kinds of. Some people love that. Some people hate that. Uh, to put it simply, uh, these kind of new spaces. You, you have the importance of how is the team functioning. So some teams, for some teams, it's working really well. For others, it's not working well. So it, it's really difficult to have like this list of benefits and, and drawbacks. But I mean, I, I wanted to, to show you this table anyway. Of course, open spaces uh, are really criticized in the literature. And I, I will go a bit quickly because even if you, you just think for yourself of the benefits and, 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 and drawbacks, I mean, you could you could probably get to the same conclusions. So it's really one thing that we heard is that it helps interaction and teamwork and blah blah blah. But also there are a lot of issues with intimacy, satisfaction at work, privacy, uh, acoustic privacy, and visual privacy. So everyone sees what you do and hears what you do. Uh, it creates stress, and you cannot control directly your environment. For example, the lightning or the the, the, the open a window in some buildings you cannot open the windows by yourself the, all these kind of questions i'm going quickly there because these are things that you can probably find more more, more easily and it's not really a exhaustive neither uh, on the fact of on the flex desk so this is the fact that you move from one place to another uh, it helps to uh, some people really like to have the choice of where they, they are going to work um, some people don't like it, and, and the, the idea, there is a whole literature on the territoriality, the fact that there are territories, and, and when, when you have to move, you lose your own territory, so it, it's difficult to live from a psychological perspective. People are coming very early to have the best places. These are, these are things that we have really heard. I must say, to be honest, that these are the things that we hear a lot in the change process. So when we, when people are thinking about what the workspace will be, they have this kind of apprehensions. And then when there is the relocation, maybe you have for some months, yeah, you have issues, but after six months, there is kind of, you cannot get used to it. I guess the same could be said for a lot of things. 
So these concerns really are most prevalent during the change process. So before there is if before the relocation occurs, but still there are problems with the clean desk and and, and uh, like who is responsible if you change uh, desk uh, of of keeping the desk clean and so on. Activity based um, activity based working. I won't be long on that because. You can imagine if we have different kind of workspaces, well, there are some spaces where nobody never goes, so you waste space also in a way. But still, it can be interesting to have the possibility of going into a more focused concentration zone and then move to have different kinds of of, of meeting rooms also available for you, small, big, uh, creative meeting rooms or or more standard and, and so on. So I think there are a lot of, of changes on that. On the uh, on these uh, aspects, and then on the neutrality, it's a big question. Uh, it's a big question in the firms, and it really depends on the top management. Because for the workers, the fact that the manager has to behave like everyone else can be a big victory. But at the same time, uh, all workers do not want are not really willing to work side by side with the manager. And for a lot of workers, especially in firms where hierarchy is very important, um, well, it, it's it's really a factor of stress to be sit uh, with your managers, and managers, of course, of course, uh, do not really want to to be also working near the workers. So, uh, and I, I was thinking of this, and uh, this is also a point that has been uh, mentioned in the literature. It also makes it difficult to have to to carry out like the confidential activities. And of course we can think of recruitment processes and dismissal uh, moments where you have to say to the workers that he's fired and so on. You need a closed space to do that. You cannot do that in the middle of an open space, of course. But th this is also true for the activities of the unions, like having a room where you can discuss with people about their issues, sometimes you, you don't want to do that in an open space neither. So you also need to think of, of these aspects, of course, and this is part of the, the BRICS. So the BRICS, uh, this is my conclusion of BRICS. Um, when you speak of new ways of working, there are these ideas that will come in the discussion, the fact that the space should be flexible so that people can move. And it's very interesting to see in many projects that People sometimes do not want to move, but still there is, this is like the conditions for, for the, the space to, to function and people need to move at some point or, or another. Um, the fact that the space must be separated into different zones, uh, that it does not belong to anyone. So of course, and this is sometimes what is difficult to, because uh, in a traditional work environment, you have a worker that says, to the to the, the team manager, listen, I, I need to have my desk and to have, for example, my own ergonomic chair because I have back issues, back problems. The, the, the team manager can say, well, okay, I, I will take care of it and so on, hopefully. But in the, in the new ways of working space, he cannot even say that because the rule is everyone should move and, and, and have, we cannot have exceptions because if one worker began to say, I need my own desk, then many others can find other reasons. Oh, I, have, I need to be there so that people can find me. You can imagine all kinds of reasons for which people would be convinced that they need their own desk. And, uh, and of course, it's not, it's not uh, an absolute, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, not absolutely true, and people can contest that, saying, no, you don't need you, your own space, you can move like everybody else does. So I think it is an important element to keep in mind. Um, and space should not show the hierarchy in the firm. Um, of course, this is, as I said, there are different ways of, of uh, implementing this. Um, and this is all about how space should be, but then, uh, the way that people with uh, perceive and then experience the space change a lot. For example, when we talk about flexible desking, people always, in all cases say, oh, we will not have enough place, enough room for everyone. So there will be problems. If we have seven desks for 10 people, uh, no one will, when, how do we do if everyone comes to the office? 
This is a question that is always raised. And in practice, maybe it happens the first day of the recreation because everyone is curious and want to see the new building. And so people come all the same day and there is a problem. And then it never happens again because of remote working, because people are factually not there all the time. Uh, and so there are a lot of fears and apprehensions that also arise during the change process, which uh, quickly disappears. And other problems also are created when, when people are, are in the space. So it's important to keep in mind this distinction between how the space is, is conceived, how it is perceived by the users, and how, how it is actually experienced. Uh, we had, so all, all the things that I was presenting is based on a paper that I wrote with colleagues and we confronted two cases of, of new ways of working. So if you want to, to find it, uh, you have the, the reference there. You can send me an email. I can share it, of course. Um, I will go quickly on that, but yeah, people are, are of course, concerned about acoustic privacy. And uh, if we are a bit critical, I, I like this sentence by Foucault, which explains that in this kind of well, it's not designed for new ways of working, but you can apply it to new ways of working. The space makes it possible to see constantly and to recognize the people and what they are doing. And this is kind of insidious. And of course, workers, but also managers do not, do not really like that. Uh, and we have a lot of interviews, excerpts. Here are, here are a few of what people say. Uh, the fact that people can see what you do on your computer, that you have noise, that you are watching what the, your colleagues do. And again, I think this is, you, it's, it's partly true, but when you are in the daily, in your daily routine, you do not necessarily do that consciously or, or so. So it, it becomes part of, of the organization and how it, it, it functions. Uh, of course, you can always be very critical towards that uh, as well. Uh, yeah, and I use the I like this picture to show to see that even from the outside, because these buildings are very often well, there are these kind of glass uh, uh, window, and so the building is designed in a way that enable some degree at, at least of vision and control. Uh, so it's an important point to keep in mind. I will be quicker on the bytes because the bricks is the main part, and um, and, and and I mean. The, the bytes, I, I feel, was not the main reason. It was more like a support part of new ways of working. And nowadays, with the, the crisis and so on, it seems more obvious, maybe. But of course, you need bytes investment because the idea of new ways of working is that people can work anywhere, anytime, anyhow. So they need technological support to do that. The first thing, it can seem obvious, but in many companies, not everyone has a laptop. So, so if you have no laptop, cannot move, you cannot work remotely. I, I say that knowing that like 20 years ago when you were working remotely, it was a very different kind of experience. You could work remotely, but you had to prepare for specific activities that you could do at home. Like you could take back a pile of, 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 of files of, of work and, and do it at home. No, the idea in ways of working is that do, you do exactly what you do in the office, but you do it at home. So there are not specific activities that are made at home and others at the office. It's the idea is that you do your, your work um, everywhere, basically. Of course, you need software to, to that make it possible to work remotely. Uh, the software that support remote working, it's of course communication technologies, but also sharing, so the, the ways to share documents, uh, uh, whiteboards and, and things like that. I won't go into the, the detail of that. Hardware, of course. Uh, what do you do with the, the phone system? And most likely, the, the most the easiest solution is to have your phone on your computer as well. So to have a USB phone that you have, maybe you already have that, I, I, I don't know. You have, of course, issue related to security and confidentiality, uh, the, the equipment of workstations in the, in the office. So if you have different, if people can choose the laptops, for example, it becomes difficult to have the same kind of plugs and so on for all computers, uh, this kind of, of, of things. Um, the equipment also of meeting rooms with, with cameras and, and uh, all these kind of things. Uh, you have to provide support for employees because, and again, this was true before the crisis. I'm, I don't know if it's still the case, but 
when you have the transition towards this kind of new ways of working, people have issues. Some people will not manage to even log in uh, to distance on their computer and things like that. So you need to provide some kind of support, which is also included in Bice part. And then the paperless project, reducing the paper, having uh, as less paper as possible. And again, uh, one question there is, uh, is, is maybe the, the, the question of monitoring. And it will be very different based on people. Uh, and, and the real question is, is it real or assumed? But when you do everything on your computer, one question that you can ask yourself is, uh, who is watching? What and why are they watching? And what will they do? Uh, and also, we have this kind of interviews with people who say, you never really know what can be done with the technology. So there is a kind of uh, ignorance about Maybe it's now I'm presenting and my institution is, is recording the presentation. What is technically possible? The manager could always check if you are connected, if you are working. Uh, and, and you can have this, and I, I said real or, or assumed or imagined because you, you don't really know if this is the case. And so it generates also maybe some kind of, of stress uh, related to the technologies among some workers. I mean, uh, so this is maybe an important point. But again, it will be very different depending on the people. And I'm I'm finishing, so not too long, and I can uh, answer some questions also about the behaviors. To me, the behaviors is really a wide range of white things uh, because you a lot of companies are trying to have this behavior sport in the project, but it takes very different forms. So I, it's really up to the company to decide what kind of behaviors they want to have emphasized. If any, because I told you in some projects, the behavioral part is kind of left aside because it's, of course, it's very touchy. I remember one project leader saying to me, changing the bricks, it's easy. We have done that already in the past. We can move from um, one building to another. It's not a problem. Changing the bytes, it can be difficult with some users, but you can always manage. But changing the behaviors, it's the most difficult part of the project because it's, it relates to how people are working together, how they are working in the company, interacting with the manager, with the colleagues and so on. So what does that mean? So I'm giving you the most, uh, to me, the most obvious example of, of what it, it means, this behavior part, so that you have an idea. First thing is to emphasize the autonomy of the workers. So this is a very common idea, I think, nowadays to say we need to get off the very hierarchical system where a manager is telling uh, his employee what to do. And so people should be more free. They are capable, capable also of deciding how they want to work, when and where. Um, and what's interesting is that the content of the work, what you are doing is not really changing, but you have the autonomy. We could say you have the responsibility also of doing it uh, correctly. So it, it, it's really part of the a lot of, of uh, annual project. I think it is also based on arguments like nowadays the new generation wants more autonomy at work and this kind of, which is really not scientific at all, this kind of reasoning on everything that touches in the new generation, we are very critical towards that. I, I can't explain how it's so popular to think the new generation is specific ideas and so on because it's not scientifically uh, Proved, I mean, but you you have this idea that having a more offering more autonomy will please the workers, will please the manager, and will please the will favor will help to retain people in the firm to attract new people in the firm, and so that more autonomy is really a, a good thing. Well, maybe this is true. Uh, it's, it's difficult to, to, to say that, but but you also have people who do not want more autonomy in their work. We have seen that. I'm not saying you, you cannot quantify that, say, okay, 80% of the people, it's not possible. 80% of the people want more autonomy. It doesn't really mean anything. But just know that in the behavioral part, there is this tendency to, to promote the autonomy of the worker. The responsibility also. So pe people are more responsible for their own work because, of course, if they are autonomous, then you leave them more freedom. But the work still needs to be done. And uh, in the line, uh, in this line, we have a lot of move toward the results-oriented uh, ways of managing the work. Uh, this is what we call objective-based management. So basically, your manager says, "Okay, by the end of the 
PT the week or by the end of the month, you should have done this, 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 and then I, I leave you do it. And we ch will check in one week, in one month, if you have met the objectives. Um, you can think whatever you want of this way of, of functioning, but it's, it's, it's easier, of course, to, to have this kind of, of management in a new ways of working environment than to have more traditional uh, control methods, I would say. So the, the results are becoming more important than the processes and that how you work and then controlling the, your step in the work, that's the ID. Connectivity, of course, the idea that you should use technology to work independently from time and place. Participation, I really like, I think this is a really nice topic of study because this idea that employees have to be more active in the change process, in constructing team agreements. So they are not just uh, receiving the managerial project, they are to a to different extent, again, participating in how it will, it will apply. And so there is, for example, in new ways of working project, usually a large part of, of behaviors is co-constructed uh, through teams agreements. So there is, a, there is a, someone from project teams the project, the, the team leader and the, 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 the employees, they have meetings together and they decide this is how we will work in the new environment. This will be the rules, these will be the principles and so on. And, and the idea behind this is that if you do that, employees will be will have an active role in how they, they will work. So they will accept the project e more easily. I think that this is a, a really a, a parenthesis. I think that this could be a big threat for trade unions because all of this happens outside of the union perimeter. So you have like a parallel, yeah, parallel participation means that you, and in new ways of working project, it's, you have the manager involving the team manager, involving the employees, and you kind of bypass the unions as the representatives of the workers, because the workers are invited to, to express their own opinions themselves directly to the project team. So I think there is really a reflection there to have also, because in this kind of project, I was explaining that we, we, we do not always see the trade unions in the picture because we have this kind of bypass mechanisms. You have surveys among employees. You, you choose some employees to be in the project teams and to participate in the reflection so that they can give their, their opinion. You de designate ambassadors among the employees that can convince their colleagues or, or and, and, and also collect issues and problems and share them with the project teams. So you have all these exchanges, I would say, all these discussions between the, the workers and the project teams that are taking place. Um, and this, this is like the society that people participate more, uh, which is very popular nowadays. And then um, the, the human centric aspect of new ways of working, uh, we just, we just Spoke about. Uh, we just talked uh, with Dikha about uh, the, 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 the management, the management humain, etc. Uh, well, this is uh, this is kind of in the again in the in the era in the, in the yeah. It's, it's a good thing now to say that people are in the center. Don't really know <laughs> what that means, but people should be in the center and not processes and not uh, the structure or so on of management practices and preoccupations. So we can say that these are this this is formulated like that objectives which are which are of course much more difficult to assess than uh, we need laptops or we need open spaces but it's like a new line uh, for for the firm to uh, a new line of yeah a new strategic line new cultural line that the firm should follow if you want and this is the behaviors part and of course behind that you have all the all the things that are actually done, the training programs, the roadmaps, the coaching, because we have also coaches coming to help the team managers to, to, to manage teams in the, these new working environments, the team agreements. So these are not really rules, but semi-formal agreements on how we should work in this kind of, of, of environment. So you have all this, um, yeah, logistics or, or things that are good, a list of actions that are being, it's not just saying, okay, it's autonomy and responsibility. And here is a document that we send to all the workers. No, you, you really can have a, a, a very heavy um, implication and you can even recruit people to, to help you doing behaviors and, and, and accompanying people. So I think it's, it's, it's an important part of the chain project. When, when I studied 
in US a working project, very often the behaviors team had more people than the other two. So, so I mean, you need, it shows that it's, it's the important part, even if it's maybe the most difficult one to, to discuss and the more, of course, the most contested one, I think in the tree. And I, it's contrary to what I just said in some new ways of working projects, it's, it's the part that changes the most because the space, the, the bricks and the space will always be there. So the bytes also to a certain extent, but the behavior, sometimes you have nothing. And sometimes you have, you have all these teams to, to, to help the change product project. So that's it. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to, I should have said that to begin with, but of course I'm a researcher, so I'm just sharing these uh, ideas and elements with you. This is based on the research that we have done and, uh, and on the, the literature. And we are not, I mean, we do not have any interest in, in promoting new ways of working. This is not, or even the, or of criticizing new ways of working. And we do not root for neither the managers nor the, nor the employees or the workers uh, or the trade unions. So we try to remain neutral, even if it's never entirely possible, but in, in the way we present the things. And uh, yeah, I will stop there so that we can have questions. And uh, I saw some things in the chat, but I will maybe stop the screen sharing and see if I can answer the chat. I don't know, Cristiano, how you would suggest to proceed if I'm reading the questions and answering them one by one or? Yeah, I think that, thank you very much, first of all, for your presentation. I think what is important for our staff is to understand that what is going on in the commission is nothing new. Uh, perhaps we are even late uh, or even too late uh, because we have the habit to start when the others are already finished uh, without taking into account uh, le the lessons learned from the process that has been managed otherwise. Uh, I think that our colleagues have seen on your uh, slides some keywords that we see today on the communication of demonstration, also some methods that are implemented. Um, that we also support, I mean, uh, we don't think, I, I don't think personally, but we don't think that to, uh, to consult directly the staff is a, is a sort of a circumvention of the social dialogue of trade unions. Uh, I think that we are credible when we stand for the staff, if what we pretend the staff think is exactly what the, st the staff will confirm. Uh, for the poll survey and uh, consultation, we have always been in favor of staff survey uh, because it's also a way to show that what we mention is exactly what the staff feel. And sometimes we have also taken into account that the feeling expressed by the staff is not totally in line with our own perception. Um, but we must also be clear that if we stand towards the administration pretending things, uh, we have no grounds for showing that it's the truth. Uh, is not going to be easy to manage. Um, I just give an example. Uh, the, the administration uh, has organized several polls and surveys in order to see if the staff is in favor of teleworking. And having made that, uh, we managed to show that the staff wants to, to, to have more telework. Uh, another example, the, the very bad fast proposal that was put on the table has been uh, largely consulted with the staff of the any directorate generals and the criticism from the staff is a uh, word by word the same that we have expressed when the, pre the project has been presented so today we are much more stronger criticizing the proposal than at the beginning of the process um, and i mean it's um, what is a bit is exactly what you mentioned the behaviors that is the biggest the most important part of the project are just Put aside, it becomes just a slogan. And what seems to be crucial for our administration is only the, the, the buildings, save money with the building, and the rest will follow. Uh, and that is the frustration. Uh, even as a chronology, they have started to arrange the building even before starting the discussion on a new way of working. So the building has already settled down, and now we are dealing with the rest. And even in a very random approach, because some colleagues are, are already in dynamic office, some others will go eventually in three years. Uh, and the routes will be the same for everyone. Uh, and, uh, even in full pandemic, to share the office with the colleagues is not the same that under normal condition. Colleagues are afraid about cleaning, 
uh, spread the virus and whatever. I think that what we could be useful, you can go through the different question and post on the chat. Uh, there are some uh, considerations, some questions, so we can help colleagues to find uh, the suitable answer to their, um, I mean, you will, the first uh, post of Ana Maria is that the, the work is not like this, is a dynamic mix of concentrated work, meetings, phone calls, so, yeah, okay. it, it, uh, it, it's not a. Uh, I, I see. It's, it's not a question, but it's it's it, it's really a nice point because even if, I mean, I think office designers when they have this this activity based ideas, if you hear them, they are very enthusiastic of saying, hey, we could have a, a concentration room there. There we could have a more a more creative room for having ideas and so on. And so they have they are kind of on their planet, and I think they are really. You have wonderful workspaces now, so they're really working well and investing a lot of time. These people are really working sometimes very hard and, and putting in a lot of effort. But even despite the best intentions, when the workspace is there, people could very well say, very well, but this is not what I need and this is not how my work is organized. And I will give you a concrete example. Uh, in one firm that I studied, there were this uh, concentration, there are, there are three types of zones, focus, concentration, you could not speak there, semi-concentration, because a lot of people had to be on the phone and you could have the phone there uh, and, and, and have phone calls and, and, and uh, so you could speak, and then collaboration, where you could also, um, uh, these were like big tables and you could work together, but you had no uh, uh, screen. So, so the people were used to work with two screens, um, and, and when people came into the space, what they said was, we don't really need the concentration zones um, because we need to be on the phone all the time for 90% 90 per, 90 of the people needed to be on the phone from 8 to 5 in the company. So they, 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 they have not enough space in the, in the dedicated zone. So they began to go in the concentration zone and everyone was understanding there is no, no space. Of course, you need to, to, to phone the people and to be available for phone calls. But at the same time, this is this, this zone is supposed to be for concentration. So, so there was this kind of tension and the collaboration zone. And one was like, we need a second screen. So this zone put screens in it. And the project team was like, but if we have screens everywhere on the table, you cannot, it's not optimal for collaboration. You have the screen in front of the people and so on. So the space was not, and, and it was well designed, but these kind of practical constraints have not been anticipated. And it might be simple to say that afterwards, but it's difficult to plan for, for everything ahead. And so these kind of issues will, of course, I think happen. So, so this is a big limit of the activity-based working is that some spaces like a creativity room, it sounds really nice on paper and then it's nobody use it because <laughs> it's not really, it's not really used in practice. So I, I think it's, it's interesting to say that, yeah, my work is not like that. And indeed, and also it's very difficult to move all the time because sometimes you answer an email, you have a phone, and you will not move. Uh, if you, if in your job, you have a lot of different kind of activities. It's, it's easy to say you can have half a day to, 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 to do a specific task on which you need to focus. Yes, but if you have a phone call, you, you are in a concentration zone, it's difficult to, to move, to do. Well, you so, so all these kind of practical problems are very important, and this illustrates quite well the difference between the conceived space and then the, the way the, the space is, is lived. Of course, every day is different, um, and pushing others for silent space, um, yeah, the others will not like that. Another, another thing is that when the manager is phoning in the silent space, well, what do you do? Do you tell to the manager, excuse me, this is a silent space. Not everyone would dare to do that. Um, maybe the manager would be very open to hear that. He doesn't really realize also or anything. I don't know, but you have also this kind of, nobody is there to, to, to enforce the rules. It's just, everyone should do it. Uh, and this is also a responsibility. Uh, if I'm moving, that one is looking at what the other do is free through, uh, not only party, this sort of unconsciously flex. Uh, and uh, yeah, indeed, it's difficult to measure for a scientific perspective to 
could ask the people, do you watch your colleagues? And maybe they would say, oh, no, I'm not doing that, but maybe they are lying. So you cannot really have an objective way of, of showing that it's true, but it's certainly possible. I mean, if I'm there in an open space, someone is behind me, he can see what I'm doing, he can hear me. So it's maybe the people will say, no, I'm not really doing that. And maybe they are, they are right, but still it, it, it's possible, which is, and, and some people will be afraid of that and others will not really care, I think. So it's also a question of individual differences. How much costly time is lost by relocating during the one day in function of the task? I think the answer is not a lot because people usually do not relocate a lot. So the, 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 the actual space is much less mobile than what you can see, well, what you can read in, in articles or so on. And project team leaders are always in this idea that people will move, people will move, but people do not really move that much. So I don't think that a lot of time is lost and usually it does, it's not very far away from, so I don't think that's a big concern. I never heard of that. Discipline will drop immediately. This is most likely true. Um, again, and uh, I mean, this is something that has been experienced already with remote working. Will discipline drop? Uh, some could argue for yes. I also hear a lot of no. Uh, also, Leo, a lot of uh, discipline is increased because people put the pressures on themselves and are controlling themselves. So it's not discipline anymore; it's auto discipline, and and they are they are yeah, working later. They are even checking their email. These are things that we hear nowadays: checking the emails uh, late in the evening. And so there is this kind of self control that was maybe not there uh, before. And so I think the discipline question is. It is, and again, it's really dependent on the culture of the organization, the management style, and the, the person itself, himself or herself. Um, I worked in an open plan office for two years. I had never seen more tension, stress, like when, you know, uh, maybe it was just an implementation issue. No, there are a lot of open plan offices working very well, I think. Um, oh, no, this is the... I know you, you, you say, I think there are, there are open spaces working very well, and I think there are open spaces not working well at all. And the initial idea was to say some profession or some activities could maybe be done in open space and other cannot, but it's, I don't think it's really proved. So I, I it remains to be discovered what kind of criteria, and of course the change process, the implementation is, I think, important. But in the paper that I referenced, th th this was our idea. We, we took two cases, one with a kind of very good change process where people were involved and so on, and the other were it's kind of the characteristic of a bad change process. And we, we show that the change processes were very different. And in the end, when people moved to the, wor to the workspaces, we had kind of similar behaviors in both cases. So it, it was interesting, but things like people fighting for the good places. So, so that, that would suggest that even if you have if you are very careful during the planification and the implementation, in the end you, you you will have some issues. And what matters is how you deal with the issues once the workplace is there uh, in a way. Um, and more tension, stress, lack of cooperation, and apathy. Um, yeah, I mean we 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 have heard about that, and we have also heard about other works workspace where people are more happy or find it more modern to work in this. It also depends on what you had as a working environment before, maybe. That's also an important point. I'm working for several in an open space and we have no problem with the team. So that's what I said. You have two, two, uh, two reactions there that it shows that it can go very different ways and it's impossible to predict. We will always need trade unions in the commissions to defend the interests of the staff. Uh, I, I'm not doubting that, of course. <laughs> And in my work in realizing the main changes, the clean desk policy, yeah, it's more, it's still more a challenge with the the, the, the sanitary situation, of course. Uh, and when it began, there were even some articles, the end of open space, the end of flex desk, because yeah, you need to clean your desk, I would say, on, on, on several levels when you move from one place to another. So this is, of course, a complex question. Um, yeah, numerous document of part of which is on paper. You cannot have everything on your screen at the same time. This is true. 
of course, confidential information, but most often firms do have some closed spaces. But then if you have these closed spaces, you can ask the question, how do you access them and who can access them? Because everyone can say, in my job, I need to do some confidential things, maybe some people more than, than others. But do you book the room? And what happens if you book the room and then do not care? Can you, or if there's no booking, can just everyone use the room? These kind of very practical questions. Unpredictable phone calls, yeah, this is true, and I think underestimated. New ways of engagement with staff is key in this team, in these times. This is probably true as well. It isn't it difficult to know what the staff wants. This is a very good question. Um, it's very difficult. I think it's, I'm, and this is something that we can criticize in participative approach. You have a survey and then you take decision based on the survey, but you don't really know. Some people did not participate in the survey probably. Why? Uh, and what do these people think? Um, but people are busy. So if you have half of the people answering the survey, you can be happy, but what does it mean that the other half is also thinking the, the same way or not? Um, and this is, I think this is managers are kind of aware of that. And this is why they go towards more participative approaches as well, because we have this basic idea that if you involve the workers, you increase the chance that they will accept the project, which I think is not true because you, what you do is that you increase the chance that you will have conflict in the process. Uh, because people will come with other demands and, and questions and they will, and they will maybe force managers to think of options that they wouldn't think of. Um, so I, I think it opens the door to negotiation, more negotiation, more conflict, which is not a bad thing in my point of view, but you, you, you do extra work and you, you have more conflict, more opportunities also for the staff and for the managers to find common grounds. Um, but it, it, it isn't automatically better because it's participative. I think it's, we, we have examples of participative change processes that were, did not really end well. So but, but, uh, that's a good point. Knowing what the staff wants, uh, you always have an idea of what the staff wants, but how do you know? And, and the staff itself does not really know <laughs> what it wants because once it, once they will move to the environment, maybe they will realize, okay, I was afraid of this, but now I think that it's okay. But this thing I had not anticipated. So I think there's a lot of ambiguity and I think it's nothing, there is nothing you can do to have less ambiguity. It will always remain ambiguous. Isn't it so that we should start with a business activity analysis? Yes, you, you could start with a business activity analysis. Uh, in, the, in the last conference, I explained I think into more detail, if I remember correctly, but I have a paper on that as well. What, how, what I, I detail the active kind of one business activity that happened in one particular case. And I, I really show that they consider a lot of questions. Of course, the buildings, but also the new generation of workers and the future of the, the firm. How will we work in 20 years? And this kind of questions. Brussels with the, the, the mobility also very difficult and, and a lot of questions in the technological evolution, the, com the competitors, so a very wide analysis, um, mapping resources and teams and the project on the real office space. So I think this is what new ways of, work, of working means. It means that it's not just a new space project, otherwise it, it, it would not be labeled like, like that. Of course, it's a way also you can have this uh, yeah, space project and say, we will say new ways of working because it sounds better than relocating and reducing the space. That's true. Um, but still, I think that when discussions begin, people at the strategic level will come up with other things that space related questions. Like the IT managers will say, oh, but if you do this, you need laptops for everyone. Uh, you people need to be equipped and so on. And the HR manager will say, but if you do this, you also need to think about how we will manage the staff, how we will have onboarding processes, like recruitment processes in this kind of, of what do you do with the new workers? The new worker, for example, has someone to welcome him, but this person is at a distance now. Can you force him to come back to the office to all this kind of question? So I think that naturally, not naturally, but in the process, other questions of the space are being discussed um, very quickly, in fact.
how can online meetings and phone calls be enriched without disturbing others around? <laughs> and this is funny because this is what we, we discussed uh, uh, in, in a meeting uh, recently. Before you had this, this idea that the, the, the open space should be silent and you should go to a room if you wanted to make noise or meetings, but now people have so much meetings that it's kind of the contrary. You stay in the, the open office will be noisy. And so I, I do not have the, 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 the best solution to this. Um, and I, I think it's still a different, difficult question of open spaces is that, of course, if you speak, you do not have walls, so people hear you. So you would need a lot of closed offices. And thinking about it because of the COVID and the ways that the, the, the explosion of video conferences like today, you would need again closed spaces, but it's not possible because the space has been shrinked. And if you have closed spaces, you do not, you do not have enough space to do that. So I think the answer would be, if you have many meetings and phone calls, you stay at home and you work remotely, but this is, I'm not sure it will work like that in, in uh, all cases, but that could be an answer. New tools are needed, HR analytics, of course, for organizational workforce planning, this is, an, Kind of of a more HR question, but of course it's part of the business analysis um, um, that we that we had. When you you say workforce planning, I, I think of planning the recruitments in the years to come. This is important, of course, if you have a team of let's say thirty people and you you estimate the sp the new workspace based on thirty people, but in five years you are sixty, you will have some issues. So of course, knowing how the workforce will evolve in the in the years to come, or trying to know that, uh, to to evaluate that is important. And visualizing presence, uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's you always have these questions. Also, do people need to say when they come to the office? But isn't isn't it a kind of way of controlling them? Then, so it's it's not. This question is not that easy, knowing where people are. Uh, maybe some people do not want to say where they are. Uh, and maybe if you have these remote habits of working, but you, you can also find, and this is this is the difficulty, it's that new ways of working, autonomy and so on, okay. But in practice, you have a lot of measures that are going against <laughs> uh, autonomy and, uh, and responsibility, like the, the this, idea of having one day where all the teams should be there at the office. Okay, but then you, you just said that the project needs to promote autom autonomy. What if I do not want to be at the office? You also said that it was working anytime, anywhere. So why couldn't be at a distance for this team meeting? So, so you have this kind of, of, people do not agree on this question. I'm not saying uh, my, my point of view, or the elements that I'm saying are absolutely true, but people do not agree and you could have this kind of reactions. It's the same thing when we have managers forcing employees to come to the office for having their uh, interview, uh, evaluation interview, uh, annual evaluation interview, and the people did not say, well, but this is my remote working day. Uh, can we do that another day? Or And of course, the managers will say, my one-to-one -one meeting, I'm doing that. I want to do it um, Yeah. On site, and, uh, and and people think that working remotely is right, and I have I have an issue with that. So you can think of all these tensions, know them probably now uh, since you have experienced remote working as well. New tools are needed. So this is what I read. If no move, phone calls are disturbing immediately. Yeah, and sometimes this is just what happens. People just have a short phone call. So everyone is disturbed, and then the phone call is over, and yeah, that, that that can happen in the in the space, and of course it's it's not ideal, but it's just what we what we see. People need to own the place, and they need to discuss how they intend to use it. Yes, and this is why there are uh, there are like workshops uh, based on this idea that people should try. Uh, the modern workshops, there are I've seen experiments where like one floor of the building is transformed into an open and flexible space and the teams are going to work there for like one week so like that they can experiment but of course it requires planning and and you need to have the resources to do that to free a floor to to experiment um i think that could that can help also and it can prevent a lot of questions and help people realize 
what it will be. I'm not saying it will solve all the problems, but it can help for sure. First, the staken is the one where your back is to the wall and you can oversee the others. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that could be true, but, but maybe some other people will have other ideas on that, like being near a window rather than in the center of the, the open space where you don't have the light and, and things like that. Points remain that in the commission, higher management took the decision to sell most of our buildings. Yes, uh, the staff will be obliged to arrange themselves. Yes, and this is like that in a lot of new ways of working projects. That means that the, 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 the facilities building decision is made and then the project is a way of, of, of putting the decision into practice. Um, and, and very often the people that are in charge of the project are not directly responsible for this. They are asked by uh, the top, top management to, to do a, a new way of working project to, so, so I mean, there are, there are intermediaries also, and this is why negotiating with them is important because they are uh, very concretely. I've seen projects in which some project leaders had to. Mm, were ordered to, to, to carry out a new project, a new working project, and no one in the company was willing to have that. Not the employees, the managers neither, the, the, the unions neither, and, and so they were like, it was a very uncomfortable position to have to do this kind of project. Um, no one wanted it. Surely this is entirely the wrong way around. Uh, I don't know if this is the wrong way, but this is how it happens. Uh, most, I, I have yet to see a company saying, we will do new ways of working. And so we will rethink or, uh, or maybe try to see what options are available. Sometimes it's kind of happening in the same way. Uh, like in two years, we know that we will have to move to a new building. So let's start already to think about it. And so you start to have other concerns very early in the strategic process. But I've never seen a firm saying we will have a, a new, we will rethink the organization. And, and so maybe we could think about relocating very often. The, the, the building issue is kind of first in the, in the reflection. Uh, potential disaster for staff and manager in the long term. Of course, we, we do not really know, know about the long term. Um, potential disaster uh, for some people, maybe because in this project we have people leaving the firm uh, or people rushed uh, out of the firm. So I guess from this point of view, this is a disaster. You also have people who like it. So, so I, I don't know if how to, to, to say that to how to assess whether it's a disaster or not, because some firms now have been working like that for 10 years and, and there is no, nothing indicating that it's more a disaster that what happens in all kinds of organizations. So I don't really know. We will also share our phone calls. Um, yeah, and in, in some firms, it's it's seen as part of the of the work. Uh, um, we had a, a study on a firm, a cons um, recruitment firm, where it, it's part of your job to be part of a team and to hear what the other says on the phone to the customers, because if they have an issue with a customer, everyone knows it. And so everyone is kept informed about the cases. And when people were working remotely, this thing disappeared. And that was a real problem for the organization. So the, when you say, I don't know if this is what you mean by sharing the phone calls, but hearing what the other says on the phone sometimes is also part of what, of what people are used to. And when they don't have that, they lack something to, to, to conduct their work. I'm not saying this is good or anything or bad or even bad, but in some work contexts, hearing the phone calls of others is also part of the of it works. When your stuff is good, good, yeah. Uh, yeah, just if you allow me to to tell sure. that I have to I have to go to the negotiation meeting exactly on new way of working. <laughs> so I leave the decret to, to chair the, the meeting and I want to thank you again for your uh, wonderful contribution that it's really important and highlights many aspects that we are going to put forward during the negotiation. So thank you again, Gregory, and I leave you to go through the question and the answer. I think it's very helpful for the colleagues. So thank you again. Thank you. Good luck for the negotiation. I don't know if I finish with the, some question there. I, I also have to leave shortly, but I 
I don't know, Dikra, if I stop there or if I answer the last question. So I, there are not a lot. The slide will be available. Yes. Um, yes, we, we, we can post the slide in our website. Yes, I, I, I will yeah. share the slides. And we can send to all the participants, uh, maybe uh, on Monday or today, if uh, are available. What do you mean? I can just send the slides? That... Yes, the slide of this presentation. Yes, and and the rest of the questions, I like the, the question on the HR files, I, I don't know if I can answer that, um, because it I... means that the HR files are in paper and it's less and less the case. So I, of course, if there are sensitive information, it, it this is a good question. Uh, I mean, how is it stored and who can access the, 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 the storage? Um, I never really, I've never really been confronted to this question, so I don't really know. Social control, yes. Um, my customers are different from other colleagues. Customers, yes. Most likely, and it's very interesting to it that some companies are happy with the structure. Uh, I I think so, but it's true that we have less information on that. Like ten years after, what do you think? Was it a good idea or not? Maybe we should have this more long term research designs. But as you can see, there are still a lot of work to do on this uh, object. So that's it. Thank you for the participation. I hope that it was insightful. And I suggest we stop there if you have no other question. Okay, thank you so much, Gregory. And I hope uh, we can organize another uh, conference in a, in a different topics. I will have nothing to say at the... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, uh, teleworking or your research on teleworking, maybe. Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, dear colleagues. And now uh, I hope you uh, a good uh, good afternoon and have a nice weekend. Thank you, merci, Grégory. Thank you. Have a nice week, nice uh, afternoon merci. and weekend. <laughs> merci beaucoup, Grégory. À très bientôt.